All right, I'm going to go ahead and show my screen. Oops. Well, I know her. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to the Mini Storage Messenger Self-Storage Webinar Series. I'm Poppy Behrens, publisher of Minico. We're delighted to have you in the audience today. This is one of several informative webinars planned for self-storage owners, operators, managers, investors, developers, and other industry professionals. The topic of today's webinar is, your customers would love to talk to you, if only you knew how to talk to them. Our presenter is Tron Jordheim, COO of PhoneSmart, a sales support and calling center servicing self-storage businesses in North America. PhoneSmart has created more than 750,000 reservations and leads for its self-storage clients in its 10 years of doing business. Tron is also the founder of the PhoneSmart Hawaii Unconference, which is coming up soon. This is a gathering of self-storage VIPs that will take place in Hawaii June 7th, through 11th of this year. 2011 marks the 32nd anniversary of the Mini Storage Messenger, the original voice of the self-storage industry. Each issue of Messenger provides readers with in-depth news and information. Cover stories and features explore the most timely industry topics and trends. In addition, our monthly columns contributed by industry experts and accomplished business professionals address a wide range of topics, including security, facility operations, technology, legal issues, legislative updates, construction, and development. We also publish a variety of other self-storage data sources, such as those you see on your screen. For more information about any of these, please visit us at ministoragemessenger.com. A little bit of housekeeping as we get started. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing on demand from our archives. We invite you to submit questions throughout today's webinar. In order to ask a question, simply type it into the question area and click send. While we will try to answer as many questions as we can during the Q&A period at the end of the webinar, those that cannot be answered by Tron due to time constraints will be answered by way of email once the webinar has concluded. Today's presentation should run about 45 minutes with the remainder of the hour open to questions. And now it's my distinct pleasure to turn the presentation over to Tron. Good afternoon, Tron. Good afternoon, Poppy. How are you today? I am just fine. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I hope everyone else is doing well. Uh, we're getting a little spurt of spring weather here in Columbia, Missouri, which is always a lovely thing to see. I know uh, lots of other parts of the country have had some bad weather too, but uh, it gives us a great excuse to talk to people on the phone if they don't want to come out and come over and visit us. So thanks everyone for logging in. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about talking to customers. Now, your customers would love to talk to you, even though sometimes you may not believe that. And they would especially love to talk to you if you knew how to talk to them. And I know that there are some of you out there who are just naturals, who, can, who have never met a stranger and can talk to anybody about anything. And uh, that is great, because we want to help you realize some of that natural skill and then for some of you who maybe are a little awkward talking to people you don't know really well, we'd like to show you that there is a practical reason that we're going to do this today. The practical reason is you're going to rent to more people, so more of the people you talk to are going to rent from you. You're going to increase your referral business because um, many of you probably are getting 25 or 35 percent of your business from repeats and referrals and man wouldn't it be nice to get some more of that it'll also uh, help you increase your length of stay uh, I don't know how many people are tracking their length of stay uh, for their average customers or for different segments of customers but man what would happen to your business if everybody stayed an extra month or two that would be fantastic wouldn't it all right well let's get moving so um, let's move on to the next slide, and we're going to talk about dealing person to person. One of the reasons that uh, learning how to talk to people is very valuable 
is because conversion rates of person-to-person -person transactions are far higher than anything else you have. Yes, there's a lot of people who love to do business online. I love to shop online. But it's usually things that I'm used to buying or things that I buy often or things that I really don't have any questions or concerns about. Um, like some of you may buy printing online. I do a lot of that. It's very easy to do. But when you talk to a real person who knows how to talk to you, the odds are much better that you're going to buy from that person. If you have a personal relationship with your vendors and your suppliers, the odds are you're going to buy more from them and buy more often from them. And that is the big advantage of talking people to people. I know I sometimes catch myself sending an email to somebody when I could just pick up the phone and talk to them. You know, uh, Poppy and I chat every once in a while, and sometimes I just send her a note, and then I think, you know, that's lazy. I should just pick up the phone and call her. So it's, it's tempting to just try to do things in an impersonal fashion. And I'm telling you, you probably also have seen this yourself, that the conversion rates are much better person to person. So that's, that's the background of what we're trying to do. So yes, self-service is getting very popular, but not for the reasons you think. OK, so my kids like to play with their uh, handhelds and their mobile phones because they're fun and you can do all kinds of things with them. But most real buyers do self-service because they don't like dealing with customer service people. I mean, think of some of your own experience where you've gone to a store and someone has been less than lovely or less than helpful or really didn't even care that you were there. That is a miserable experience. And so because of that, people really do prefer self-service many times. But it's not because self-service is lovely. It's because sometimes the service people are not lovely. So then we'll move on to our next slide and talk about an interesting thing that I noticed in self-storage. Now, you may have noticed this yourself, too. I know there are still some people with checking accounts out there. And when they come in to pay their rent at your storage place, how many of them have to look around to look for a sign, or how many of them ask you who to make the check out to? And how many of those people know you by your first name? I bet there's a lot of people who know you by, their, by your first name who couldn't tell you the name of the company they store with. That's because they store with you, not the company. That's a, 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 another important reason why people-to-people -people transactions are so important. So think about that a minute. In your dealings, how many people do you know by first name at the different businesses where you shop? And you're really shopping with those people more so than you're shopping with the business. Isn't that true? So how do you make this work for you? Well, we have a simple motto in our call center which is just what you see here. Make a friend, make a sale. Okay, of course, easier said than done sometimes, but when you come off as someone who is friendly or someone who is trying to make a friend, you make a sale, you make referral business. I mean, for, for some of you, this is, this is how you sell because you just have a natural interest in people and uh, people pick up on that, right? So. Let's talk about how we're going to make a friend so we can make a sale. Here's how you make friends with people. You listen to them. Right? Isn't this what happens in the transactions that you have with your friends in life? Don't your friends really just want you to listen to them? Don't you just really want people to listen to you when you have things on your mind? So this is the first and probably most important thing whenever you're selling or providing customer service is you have to listen. There's nothing more frustrating than going to, to a company and, uh, you know, so here's a potential scenario. I might say, hi, my name's Tron Jordheim. How are you today? And they say, well, I'm fine. What was your name again, sir? Well, okay, I have a name that's you either forget it or you remember it. but. That just proves that the people aren't listening to you. And that instantly frustrates shoppers. I'm sure you've had it happen to you a time or two 
where you've been at the store and you've been very busy, lots of things going on, someone comes in and says something to you and you didn't catch it and you have to go, I'm sorry, what was that? And you can feel the person just going, oh, that's a frustrating thing. So yes, people want to be heard. That's number one. What else goes into play when you're trying to make a friend and make a sale? They want you not only to hear, they want you to understand, right? Don't you want people to understand what you're saying when you talk to them? I mean, if you have kids, it gets a little frustrating sometimes when you're trying to explain something to them and they act like they don't get it. Well, that's what happens in customer service and sales transactions too. And this particularly happens to us in self-storage because, you know, a few years ago, at PhoneSmart in the call center, we used to get a lot of people calling because they had a happy circumstance. They're buying a new house, they're renovating their house, they got a cool new job in a great new city where they want to move to. Uh, I mean, all kinds of happy things were happening to people. And they were happy they needed storage. Well, I don't know how it is for you, but we don't get a lot of happy callers anymore. It's mostly, we're downsizing. We have to move. The kids had to move back with us. I had to move my parents. I mean, you hear the same kinds of things. There aren't that many happy stories out there. And when someone comes to you and starts relaying some of their unhappy story to you, they really just want you to hear them and understand where they're coming from. Especially since they're giving you all kinds of things that they hold very dear. I mean, in this time, a lot of people are not only lacking money, but they're lacking time, and they're trying to get some time from you to be able to store the things they need, and they're spending money they could spend elsewhere. This is an important emotional investment for them. So once people feel like you've listened and you understood, what's next? Well, let's move on to the next slide and we'll talk about what's next. They just want to talk to you. You've all got customers who come to the store and just spend time talking to you. I mean, this is one of the sales secrets at PhoneSmart, why we have such high conversion rates on uh, phone calls, because we talk to the people. We listen to them. We try to understand what they're saying so that we can then relate that to your store, if we're answering for you, so that the people realize that storage is going to offer them not just a solution, but a way to get some of this stress off of them. So people really do like talking to people. They would prefer talking to people than doing transactions without people. Don't you like doing business with people you like? I know I do. I'm on a first name basis with all the vendors and suppliers and sponsors that I work with. That's a, that's a, a, a big deal for me. Do I enjoy the people I'm dealing with? That has a lot to do with how the transactions end up. And I'm sure it's the same with you. It's certainly exactly like that with your customers. And I know you've had it happen when someone has moved into your store and, and you see them unloading and you ask them a little bit about their situation. It's not unusual for someone to say, hey, I used to have my stuff stored down the street at you know XYZ, but man, those people are just difficult to deal with. They're just jerks. I got out of there, right? People will move because the store manager was unpleasant. And they'll come back to you if you are. And it's your smile that is your secret weapon. Now this may seem just too simple to believe, but this is really what it's all about. Your smile tells so much to people. Now, in person, it's a lot easier to make your smile work for you because you can smile at the person, you can catch some eye contact, you can have a little give and take with facial expressions and hand gestures. On the phone, it's a little more difficult. You've got to be able to really smile big so the people hear that you're smiling. Now, that's especially important for a couple reasons. A lot of times you're busy doing stuff at the store. 
because as you well know, you wear 12 hats there, and you may be in the middle of all kinds of things when someone walks in to rent a unit, and you have to stop yourself and put on a big smile and greet that person and become their friend. That means a lot to them. They see you stopping what you're doing and coming and paying attention to them. It means a lot to them. It means a lot to them when they call through and talk to one of our reps, and our rep has a big smile, has a friendly greeting. It means a lot to them because you yourself, I'm sure you call customer service lines, and you hear people say, hello, thank you for calling. How may I help you? What's your first name and phone number? Yes, thank you. Ah, that's no fun. So smile, and the people are going to like you right away because they're going to think you're real, and people like that, as you know. So here's something I talk to some of our call center reps about. You ever wonder why, why babies survive as long as they do? Well, it's because they're, they're very cute when they smile. I don't know how, how many of you uh, are parents, but when you have your first baby, and uh, you haven't slept in weeks, and you don't know which side is up or down, the only thing that saves the baby most days is that cute, adorable smile. And that's the same thing that happens in business. Many times, the only thing that saves us is we've got a good smile for our customer. So go ahead. Let, you, let your teeth show. And, and really, when it comes down to it, uh, isn't it healthier for you to enjoy your day and enjoy your transactions rather than just seeing every transaction as another lousy chore to do? That's no fun. No fun at all. So smile away. Now here's the other two parts that are going to be a big help to you. When people think that you're, you're friendly and helpful, well, now you've hit a home run. And so how are you helpful with your customers? Well, ask them some good questions. Find out what they need. Listen to them. Understand them. And then try a couple of these phrases. If you take away nothing else from this webinar except these three phrases, you're going to rent a lot more units. It's very simple. Someone asks you any kind of question, sure, I can help you with that. Well, and even if you don't have exactly what they need, you know someone who has it, or you can help them figure it out. They ask you another question, yes, we have that. Hey, do you guys uh, have uh, those storage units with the roll-up doors? Yes, we have that. And then, yes, we can do that. Hey, can you guys get me some boxes to help me uh, you know, get some of my stuff packed? Yes, we can do that. If you master these three phrases, if these are your responses, sure, I can help you with that. Yes, we have that. Yes, we can do that then you're immediately going to come off as being helpful and ready to do, and that is going to help so much in your transactions with customers. Even if you have a situation where things get a little squirrely or you know transactions don't always go perfectly, but when their first impression of you is that you are helpful and you are friendly, you can go a long way with them. So if this is all you take out of here, you're doing good. Sure, I can help you with that. Yes, we have that. Yes, we could do that. And I would suggest you practice those in the mirror. I'm serious. Practice them in the mirror, saying them to yourself. Practice with your uh, assistants. Practice with your other colleagues. Sure, I can help you with that. Yes, we have that. Yes, we can do that. It's good stuff. Now, what if you can't? Here's a, here's a concept that works so well in the world of sales. And we call this technique, yes, we have no bananas. Now, what I, I, I was going to load the video in the webinar, but I'll encourage you to go on YouTube and look up the song, Yes, We Have No Bananas, by Louis Prima. Some of you may have no idea who Louis Prima is, but uh, if you like Disney movies, he's the guy who did the music for The Jungle Book. Uh, and the voice of uh, one of the bear or whatever in that movie. Anyway, I'm, I'm running off track. The point is, uh, when you can't do something, tell people what you can do. Don't just say, no, I can't do that. Say, here's what I can do for you. So if someone says,
do you have any bananas? You say, yes, we have no bananas, but we have grapes and plums and pumpkins. Uh, anyway, the, you have to go pull the YouTube video and listen to it. The whole premise is this fellow comes over from uh, Italy, starts a vegetable store and a fruit store, and how he builds his business is every time someone asks for something he doesn't have, he says, yes, we don't have that, but here's what we do have. And he sells so much fruit and vegetables, he has to send for his cousins to come help him run the store. Anyway, Louis Prima tells the story better than I do. But use this as a funny way to make sure you're always telling people, but here's what I can do for you. I'm sorry I can't do that, but here's what I can do for you. I'm sorry we're not able to do that, but here's what we can do for you. Okay, yes, we have no bananas. That is going to be a, a big help to you. And if you're not chuckling and rolling your eyes at this now, you will after you see the video. So it's pretty funny. So, okay, you're a can-do person. Your customers like that. They're happy to see that you're helpful, you're friendly, you're trying to get things done for them. Big deal for your customers. So now let's talk about a couple behaviors that are going to work very well for you as well. You've got a couple phrases that are going to work well for you, which is, which are, excuse me, right? Yes, I can help you with that. Yes, we can do that. Yes, we have that. So the first behavior we already talked about, smiling. That is very important. The next is to listen. Now, to, to intentionally try and listen 70% of the time when you're dealing with a customer, it's, it's a little hard to do, but it's a good way to make sure that you hold your tongue. I would encourage you to come up with some little piece of business, some little action that keeps you quiet while your customers are talking. Okay, if you have a, your pen in your hand, squeeze your pen. Uh, rub your fingers together. Do something to keep yourself from talking too much when you're talking to your customers and your prospects. Remember to try and listen 70% of the time. And then make good eye contact with them. It drives, you, it drives me crazy, and I'm sure you too, when you talk to somebody who won't make eye contact with you. Um, you're not sure whether to take that as disrespectful or whether the person just has no social skills or what, but it drives you crazy. So make good eye contact. Now don't try and stare them down, obviously, but you know, make appropriate good eye contact and ask good questions. Because if you ask appropriate questions about their situation and about their needs and their experience, you're going to find all kinds of ways you can help them. And they're going to tell you all kinds of things that will allow you to say, yes, we can do that for you. Yes, we have that. Sure, I can help with that. So smile big, smile often, listen intently, try to listen 70% of the time, make good eye contact with the people, and ask good questions. Those are all going to be very helpful for you. And what your customers are going to find is, hey, friendly, helpful person, they're pleasant to deal with, I like this lady, I like this guy. That's going to mean a lot. And why it means so much is because there's so many decisions they can make that can go to your favor or against your favor. Most, uh, here again from our experience at PhoneSmart, it used to be that people did not shop around so much. Now it seems like they shop around a lot more. There's all kinds of reasons someone could go rent with your competitor, but if they find you pleasant and helpful and friendly, they've got a much better reason to rent with you than the guy down the street. Now, your referral business is like gold to you, and what would it be worth your business, worth you personally, for people to go and tell their friends, hey, you know the manager over there at ABC Storage? Nice guy. He's okay. She's great. She took good care of me. You know what that's worth? That, that is almost priceless. Now, lots of your customers don't buy boxes and locks and supplies from you the first time you run into them or the first time they come rent from you. 
And some people may rent a unit from you for a year and never buy any supplies from you. But they know you're there and they like you and they'll come back when they need something. What's the value to your business if you have some previous customers stop in twice a year to spend $50 on boxes? Hey, that's good extra revenue, isn't it? One of the most important reasons why they need to think you're pleasant is because everybody is faced every day with decisions about cutting expenses, right? So when it's time for your customers to cut expenses, where are they going to cut expenses? Are they going to cut expenses with you or are they going to cut expenses elsewhere? Well, if they like you, someone else is going to get cut first before you, right? Isn't that how it works in your life when you're looking to cut expenses? You say, well, you know, I'm spending a little bit of money over here, but you know what? I really like that guy. He's treated me well. He's done good for me. Eh, I won't cut him out this month. And that's how it works for people. So the fact that you're pleasant and helpful and friendly is going to mean you don't get cut first. You may not even get cut at all. That's really a big deal in this day and age. Because really, our business relationships are definitely more than just the money and more than just what we feel we get in return for that money. That's true for you and the purchases you make and the suppliers you deal with. It's the same thing for you. So if you want people to rent with you instead of somebody else, if you want them to tell their friends you're OK, if you want them to come see you when they need anything storage and moving and packing related, if you want them to cut their expenses elsewhere when they need to trim a few dollars here and there, this is the way to do it. So powerful stuff that's going to help you. Now here's my plug for PhoneSmart. We do this stuff for you on the calls that we answer for you. Because what we do is the same thing I'm telling you to do, but we do it for you. So we help build the association in the caller's mind that your place is a friendly place, it's a helpful place, it's a place where people know what they're talking about, and that goes a long way in helping you create more rentals. And you can do the same thing for yourself, certainly, but this is what we're all about and why we've been successful. Because we look at what's this really all about, it's about having a good time with your clients. You know, you've got to spend eight or ten hours a day at work. You might as well enjoy yourself. You've got all kinds of people that you have to deal with. You might as well enjoy them. And so we try to do the same thing here with our clients. We try to go ahead and use what we learn to provide training and insight that our customers can then use to improve their business. Um, we try to have a lot of fun with our clients and, and friends in the business with our uh, Hawaii Unconference, which is an awesome thing I would invite all of you to come to if you could. And we try to spend a lot of time listening. I realize in a teleseminar like this, when I'm doing all the talking, it's kind of uh, ironic that I'm telling you to do all the listening, but we listen to our clients and act on what they tell us. And then we take all of that information to improve what we're doing and come up with some new innovations to help us sell better and help us present their properties better. And you can do the same thing. Every interaction you have with one of your prospects or one of your customers should give you lots of information you can then use to say, hmm, what can I do better? What can I say better? How can I listen better? Uh, what can I do to help this person more? And then you become even more friendly and more helpful and more pleasant. And what a, what a great thing that is when that all comes together. So the purpose of today's seminar is simple. We want to rent to more people. We want you to increase your referral business. We certainly want you to get more repeat customers. And increasing length of stay would be a wonderful thing as well. So let's, let's talk about the impact of that a little bit. What if you closed 5% more of the prospects? So maybe right now, 
I don't know, we have a lot of clients at PhoneSmart that close 45% of all the leads and reservations we send them. What if they got to 50%? That's a lot of additional revenue. That's some powerful stuff. And you can do a five-point increase. What if you increased your referral business from 30% of your current uh, new rentals to 35%? Boy, that's huge, especially when you think about how much advertising dollars you're probably spending right now to increase your referral business would be a big boost, wouldn't it? What about if you increased your repeat business by 5%? Wow, so you've got the same customer twice now instead of just once from your marketing dollars. That's huge, isn't it? And you get that by doing some of the things we talked about with the, the behaviors and the actions and the phrases to be more friendly and more helpful. Now this is a huge one and unfortunately I don't know a good way to directly measure friendly, helpful, pleasant against length of stay. But I can tell you that if each of your tenants stayed one month longer than they normally do now, your business would transform enormously, wouldn't it? You should sit down and try and do the math and figure out what would happen if you've got 500 tenants who stay six months as opposed to 500 tenants who stay seven months. You do the math for me. I would love it if any of you would do that math and then send me an email and tell me what you think you came up with and I'll send you a phone smart hat because I think you'll be surprised to see what a huge impact that would have on your business. And so it's how do you affect length of stay? Well, a lot of things you don't know about when your customers are in there. A lot of your customers you don't see that often. Okay, but if they know that you're friendly and helpful and pleasant and they like you, well chances are they're going to cut expenses elsewhere when it's time to move. They're certainly not going to move out because they're mad at you. And I know it's happened to you that you've accidentally annoyed somebody and they moved out because they were mad at you. I know it's happened to you. It stinks when it happens, but if it happened a lot less, that'd be good too, wouldn't it? So let's open it up for questions right now. I feel like I've, I've kind of fussed at you a lot about some good information. So I think this would be a great time for... Um, you to type in any questions that you have right now and let me turn it over to Poppy and she can throw a couple questions out this way and let's see what we can do with them. All right, wonderful. We have uh, quite a few questions that have come in. The first one is, as an owner, how do you train your managers and assistant managers to improve their customer service skills, especially if they're resistant to change? Okay. Well, I think, I think the question brings up a really good point, and it's this resistance that we initially have to overcome. And, and I think sometimes the resistance we train in accidentally, because I think sometimes as owners, we start initiatives that never get finished. We start initiatives that are kind of half-baked, and we get them started and they kind of sort of don't work so we don't really follow through with them. So I think part of this we have accidentally trained into the manager. It's, it's like, okay, I, I love to talk about training dogs because dogs are simple to train. Okay, but if you tell your dog sit and then don't make it sit and then tell it sit again and don't make it sit and then finally the third time you say sit, you make it sit, your dog doesn't sit when you say sit, it sits when you say sit, 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 sit. So a lot of the stuff we train in because we're not being very intentional in our training. So first I would say look at what you've done in the past. If your folks are resistant because you haven't done a very good job of designing and implementing programs that had a measurable way to judge success, then it's probably your fault. Okay, and then you have to learn how to serve programs better. Now, on the other hand, 
if you have served some programs that you are quite sure were pretty well designed, were pretty straightforward, were pretty easy to implement, easy to understand, and your people just are resistant, then you're going to have to make a change. Then you're going to have to have an honest talk with them and say, look, the world has changed. It used to be you could run a self-storage facility basically as a caretaker. You didn't have to do anything but keep the place nice and clean, make sure the rent was collected. That's about it. OK, those days are gone. Self-storage is now a customer service and a sales business. And we have to adjust. We have to become sales and customer service people. Are you willing to become a sales and customer service person to help the business grow? And if the person says no, then you have to make a change. If the person says yes, then you have to get them the tools to help them with that. And you may have to start at the very basic beginning of basic telephone etiquette, of learning how to smile, of, of learning some very basic phrases. And, and I would suggest that you break your training up into easily manageable, easy to do pieces. If you bring someone a 20-page workbook and say, OK, by Monday, we're going to do everything like this, it's going to be impossible to implement too many moving parts, too many things to work on. But if you come to them and say, OK, we are going to smile when we pick up the phone. Every time the phone rings, you smile when you say hello. And you stand there until they smile every time they pick up the phone. Pretty soon, it will become instinct to them or natural to them. And they'll smile every time they pick up the phone. And now you've got a huge win. So to kind of backtrack there, first determine whether it's your fault because you haven't designed or implemented your programs well, or whether your people just don't care to change, first thing. And then next thing, when you design your program, do simple, achievable steps that are easy to train, easy to monitor, and easy to judge. And when that's looking really good, then move on to the next thing. So I, I hope that helps. All right, next question, um, again in the line of training. How do you train your managers to become, how do you train a manager to become more of a salesperson than an order taker? Ah, that is a great question, because that is you know, sort of the conflict always, right? It's easy to get an order from someone when they come in and say, hey, I want to order something. <laughs> It's less easy when they come in and say, I wonder if I really need this or not. So good question. A lot of what I put in here is good basis for that. Because if your staff is smiling and listening and making good eye contact and asking good questions, their prospect is going to have very little resistance, and their prospect is going to be open to their suggestions. Um, that's the, 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 a good first step. Uh, another sort of conceptual twist is to think that selling is sometimes a dirty word to people. There's some, some people who think selling means you're convincing people to do things they don't want to do. That's not really true, because you really can't make somebody do something unless you're holding a gun to their head. What selling and self-storage really is, is helping people make a decision about where to store rather than letting them spend a bunch of time trying to figure it out. So if you have people who really like the idea of customer service and aren't so sure they want to be salespeople, well, you're providing your customer a disservice if you let them spend two days looking around at storage units and calling around at storage places, when your place was a good choice to begin with, try to look at it that way. You're doing people a favor by helping them cross find a storage unit off of their to-do lists, and you're doing them a favor by helping them make their decision now so they don't have to stress out about it. I think if you can make that adjustment, to where your people are smiling, listening, asking good questions, and where they really believe that they're doing people a favor by getting them in a unit today, then the whole selling process becomes easy. So I hope, I hope that helps. All right, next question. Um, what do you think about 
using mystery shopping? Does it work? Yes, it does work. It's, it's excellent. And we mystery shop our call center reps, and we do mystery shopping services for other clients as well. But again, you have to be careful how you design it. So um, first, you have to sort of get a baseline and figure out where are you in terms of service and customer, uh, customer service and sales. And then where do you want to get to? Okay, and how are you going to get there? And then how are you going to judge it? All big concepts. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the answer to a previous question. What if we said all we want to train on for now is to get everybody to smile and say, sure, I can help you with that when they answer the phone? Then it's a simple secret shopping assignment. Your secret shopper calls your store and listens for a big smile. Now, you can tell when someone's smiling, right? You all know you can tell on the phone if someone's smiling. So the person either gets a yes or no for smiling, and you ask them a simple question. I need to get a storage unit today. That might be the question your shopper asks. And if your store manager responds, sure, I can help you with that, they get a yes check at sure, I can help you with that. That may be all you do for your secret shopping until your managers are perfect at big smile when they answer and saying, sure, I can help you with that. When that's batting 100%, now you can add more stuff to it and go deeper and deeper. But if you start with a whole long checklist of 20 things that, this, that the manager has to do when they're selling, it's going to be very hard for them to do it genuinely and authentically. And what they're going to do is just figure out a way to score good on the secret shop. And that may have nothing to do with doing well uh, live, so to speak. So yes, yeah, secret shopping is fabulous. You just have to set it up right so that it helps you be successful. Thank you. Next uh, question, again, on training. What are the best methods for manager training if you are a smaller operator? Good question. Uh, things like this are great. The webinars that Mini Storage Messenger do, great training stuff, because you can log in middle of the afternoon when it's hopefully not terribly busy, pick up a lot of good tips, make some notes to yourself, decide what things you're going to work on, and then work on those. Great way to do it. Um, there are other ways that you can go about it. One of the things that we developed at PhoneSmart is a um, telephone coach service where we actually call into our clients and spend 15, 20 minutes doing a coaching session on things that they're trying to work on or things they're having trouble with. That works well. Uh, another thing that you can do yourself is to just role play. Find a friend or a colleague and role play on things that you've heard that stumped you. You know, how do you deal with it when someone says, gosh, I'd love to, but I got to talk to my husband first. Or someone says, geez, that's really more than I'm looking to spend. You know, how do you work on those? Role play on them. So I would say, you know, webinars like this, role playing, two great ways to, to, to help get some information and training just on an ongoing basis. Thanks for your question. All right. Next question is, what do you suggest to get managers networking in the community if they've never done it before? That's a very good question, too, because it's easy when you're sitting in your office and someone comes in to stand up and say, hey, how you doing? Glad you could come join us. Not so easy when you're at a networking event and you feel maybe a little awkward about you know, being around people you don't know. Um, I would suggest uh, going to networking events like Chamber of Commerce things or open houses uh, at businesses and those kinds of things. Because the people who go there want to meet other people. They want to network. They want to trade business cards. And an easy way to kind of get over that awkwardness is just to look at people's name tags. You might see the name of their company and you might go, oh, hey, I know somebody who works there. Or I don't know what that company is. Let me find out what it is. So you can walk up and say, oh, hi, I see you work for ABC Company. Yeah, tell me what ABC does. I've seen the name, but I'm not familiar with you. And that gives that person a chance to talk, which then allows you to pick up on some things to 
talk back about. That's a great way to do it. Uh, another great way to help is to have something to give people, even if it's keychains or, or just postcards with the picture of your storage place on it. You can walk into a business and say, hi, how are you? I was just giving away a few freebies today for our storage company. Here's a, a handful of keychains. Maybe you and some of your employees would like those. And right there, you can strike up a conversation that's pretty harmless. So I'd say those are two good ways to do it, to try to get to some networking events and just look at people's name tags and make some comments or take some little giveaways and go to local businesses and just say, hi, I'm here giving away some goodies today and I'd like to offer you a handful of these. So those might help you get going. Thanks. All right, another question kind of related to the same topic. What can managers do to better market their facilities? Well, I think that's a, that's a great general question because especially now there's so many uh, marketing opportunities out there. I mean, it, it, it used to be not that many years ago where if your place was clean and had nice curb appeal and you had a decent ad in the yellow pages, you had people finding out about you and coming by. But now there's so many ways to find people with internet marketing and mobile advertising and you name it, it can be a little overwhelming. But I think the best thing you can do is still the basics. Great curb appeal, a nice looking place, it's clean and smells good when people come in. I think a lot of people overlook the smell check, that it may be clean but maybe it doesn't smell right. So get it smelling right. Bake some cookies, uh, you know, do something to make it have an attractive smell. A and then find a way to get people to kind of look around a little bit. Going to the business networking events, you can invite people to come in and visit, uh, things like that. If you can get people on the property or let them see it as they come by. Uh, the little yard signs that you can put out in front of your store just to grab attention are great putting out some flags, you know, the dancing guy. I mean, things like that just to get people to catch your, to turn their eye to you and see, oh, that's a storage place. All of that helps. Uh, because if your place is like most, you're getting at least half of your business from people who just drive by and know you're there or notice you. So hopefully those are some tips that help you get going. It's a big topic, though, that we could go on and on about for a long time. Thank you. All right, another question. How can I help my fellow employees to respect their bosses or their boss or their district manager? That's a tricky question too because um, sometimes bosses and district managers have too many things going on and when they're visiting the store they sometimes forget to forget all the other stuff going on and focus on the store and they they sometimes give the wrong impression by mistake you know they're in a hurry or they're stressed out because they've got you know other things going on and they accidentally give the wrong impression that they don't have time to be there they're not interested in being there you know we all draw conclusions quickly sometimes sometimes we read more into things so I would say if you think that some of your coworkers are not paying due respect to your owners and regional managers, I think you should pull your owners and regional managers aside and say, we're having this problem. And I don't know what it comes from, but you know, let's work on it all together. And if the owners and the regional managers Take a little more time when they're visiting, ask some good questions, smile, same kind of things we talked about here. It'll help give the employees more confidence. And then they're going to have to also learn to follow through. So if they correct someone's behavior, they're going to have to follow through on the correction. Uh, if they give someone a training goal and that person meets the training goal, they have to follow through with some praise and reinforcement. A lot of these problems come from owners and regional managers not realizing that a big part of their job is acting as a sales manager, acting as a people manager. So a lot of it comes back to them. 
On the other hand, I would say pull some of your colleagues aside and say, hey, cut them some slack. You know, they're trying to do the best they can do. Cut them some slack. Give them some help. Maybe they're not perfect. Maybe they're not always lovely, but, you know, cut them a little slack. they got a lot of pressure right now. Let's see what we can do together. And maybe that will help. Good. Next question, Tron. How do you respond to a tenant that is not happy about a rental rate increase? Ah, that is pretty typical, isn't it? Interestingly enough, though, companies that I talk to who pass on rental rate increases find very, very few people come back and complain about it and, and actually move out because of the rent increases, as long as they're you know, somewhat reasonable. So I would say, first of all, you need to prep your rent increases. Uh, you need to make sure everyone gets a note apologizing for having to, rent, to raise rents. But everybody knows costs are increasing. Uh, they may not know that you had to cut ra rates in 2009, 2010, and you're just now trying to catch up to market rate. But, you know, these are things that you can explain to them. And really, prices go up everywhere. Gas just went up the other day at the pump. Uh, you know, nobody's rent stays the same. Now, if your service level is slipping, it's a little harder to justify a rent increase. But if you're trying to take better care of the place and keeping it clean and keeping it looking good and smelling good, then I think you just have to let them know that, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, our, our costs go up all the time and, you know, we're trying to pass on a little bit and, and I'm sorry. Now, you may have some ways you can soften that rent increase. You might be able to give them a coupon for some free supplies or you might be able to get clearance to give them only half of the increase they're due. You know, so you're going to have to work with people because you don't want someone moving out mad at you. That's for sure. But, you know, if they see you as helpful and friendly and pleasant, it's a lot easier for them to take a rent increase than if they see you as someone who is, you know, uncaring and unhelpful. So, thanks. Um, here's a comment. I smile on the phone, too. I'm very friendly still. How can I get more sales? All right, well, you've got the first big piece out of the way. I would say try to be the master of the alternate choice question. This is a, a simple and sort of old tried and true sales technique. So, um, and I don't know what you're doing right now, but if you're doing this, then, you know, take it as a refresher. Uh, you invite someone to come into the store. Say, so, well, why don't you come in and take a look sometime? And the person says, yeah, I'd like to do that. Don't stop there. Say, well, what day would be good for you? I'm here all week. Is Friday good or is Saturday better for you? Good alternate choice question. They say, oh, Saturday. Well, is morning good for you or is afternoon better? I'm just asking because it gets busy and I want to look out for you. So is morning or afternoon better? They might say, well, morning's better. Great. I'll look for you Saturday morning. Saturday morning, right? Yes, great. So to be able to use alternate choice questions to narrow it down to they're coming in Saturday morning to look is way better than just, yeah, I'll come in and look sometime later this week or this weekend. So things like that will help you get better commitment from the people. So become the master of the alternate choice question. That's a, a good starter. So I hope that helps. All right, wonderful. Um, as we wrap up, uh, Tron, why don't you uh, take just a moment to share uh, your it's a little bit of information about your upcoming unconference with oh, uh, our yes. attendees today? Yes, this is going to be a lovely thing. Uh, in 2009, we got together with about 40 uh, self-storage people on the big island of Hawaii at a wonderful resort called the Manalani. And now some of you may be thinking, oh, I can't afford that. That's crazy. But uh, the, they have extended to us a rate of $199 a night for deluxe rooms at a fabulous resort. So it's really a lot more affordable than you think. And what we found was because we were in such a great environment and because we were a small crowd, we had wonderful, valuable discussions about all kinds of things self-storage. So we're doing it again this year, June 7th to 11th. Uh, at the Manolani Resort, and if you want to email me, I'll get you all the information. Uh, one of the things we're doing this year, which is fabulous, 
we're having a fella who calls himself the conversion scientist. His name is Brian Massey, and he helps people make sure that their websites convert to their optimal potential and, and is a popular speaker at all kinds of uh, internet marketing events. So it'll be a great way to boost some of your marketing potential. And then we're just going to have a fantastic time with uh, speakers like uh, Jim Stevens from Extra Space, uh, Mike Richards from High Tech Center Shift, and uh, other industry well-known people who are going to be there networking and sharing. It'll just be wonderful. Sounds so like a great I hope time. some of you can join us, yes. Good, good. We'll make sure that you uh, email Tron for some additional information. We'd like to thank everyone for attending today, and we certainly hope we provided you with useful information to assist you in your self-storage endeavors. You will be receiving an email with a link to the archived presentation, along with a very special offer for Tron's book, Rent It Up. So make sure you watch your inbox for this email. And uh, last but certainly not, not least, for more information about any of our upcoming webinars or to view any of our archived webinars, please visit our website at ministoragemessenger.com. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Tron. And uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. Well, thanks, everyone. Hope to see you soon.